The time has come to answer the age old question, and that is which is best. There are three Lego Marvel superhero games that have been released to date. Yes, before you go on ahead and type in the comment section below, I'm aware that technically we could add a caveat to this ranking because the mobile versions of this games are obviously going to be a little bit different and they are not identical to the console and PC releases, but I'm not going to be counting those as I have not played those and I'm focused on specifically the titles that most people have played. So which ones am I talking about? Those would of course be Lego Marvel Super Heroes, Lego Marvel Super Heroes 2 and Lego Marvel's Avengers. So we're going to be taking a look at all three today, uh, listing them from worst to best. Again, this does not mean that I think any of them are terrible games because I don't think so, but I am most certainly going to be ranking them from worst to best with this video. And I would love to hear your opinions in the comment section below. Now, with that all in mind, let's get rocking, rolling and kick things off with Lego Marvel Super Heroes 2. Now, Lego Marvel Super Heroes 2, oddly enough, is the latest release in the Lego Marvel lineup. So it's kind of odd that it seems like we regressed over time when it comes to the quality of these games but let me explain why i feel like that is the case this really does feel like a concept of with a great premise comes a great disappointment because the idea for this game is quite clever coming off the heels of lego marvel superheroes 1 i thought that the introduction of kang as the big bad guy was kind of a cool idea the idea of creating a brand new hub world that would comprise from a bunch of different parts and timelines of the Marvel Universe put together sounded like a really cool concept. And in parts, it is. There are some really cool missions within the actual hub world, but the problem is, is that it never really feels cohesive and it never really feels like a place that you want to go back to over and over again and explore. Whether it be maybe some areas that are kind of cool, like the Sakarian Arena or maybe Nueva York, and maybe you like to go on ahead and check out the Manhattan Noir area, but the other parts of the hub world just seem to be forgettable and don't really have that same kind of feel that the very first Manhattan had in Lego Marvel Super Heroes. Beyond that, the boss fight of this game, the big boss fight of Kang, really felt underwhelming. Again, coming off the heels of Lego Marvel Super Heroes, which had the epic fight with Galactus, which we'll talk about in a bit, I think that it was just so underwhelming, the fight with Kang. And beyond that, most of the boss fights in this game felt very underwhelming as well. It really just always felt like actual ideas were not bad. It's just that the execution seemed to be a little bit rushed, a little bit lacking that polish and attention to detail that the very first game had. Moving along to second place, and of course, by process of elimination, you'll also figure out what is in first place but let's talk about lego marvel's avengers now i know that this is somewhat of a controversial opinion because i think most people would probably actually place lego marvel's avengers as the worst of the bunch but i do think that lego marvel's avengers had its positive qualities so let's talk about what those were so first and foremost it was released at a time where we had the MCU at its height. It was really chugging along and building more and more momentum. People were hyped up about the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The problem was that we didn't really have any video games to play. There were a couple of those games that were based on the movies that were absolutely awful. And so this was our best experience that you could have if you wanted to play through the events of the MCU. And boy, oh boy, did they ever do a great job. There were a lot of really, really fun recreations of the movies in Lego form, adding and sprucing that additional Lego comedy that we have come to love and expect. And I thought that all of that was done really well. Now, again, I understand that for some people it could feel a little bit predictable because it's like, well, I've watched the movies, so why would I want to play through them in video game form? And that's a fair criticism. It's just that that has never been a problem for me. And I oftentimes actually do love the idea of playing a video game based on a movie that I really love because I get to go on ahead and relive those moments that I enjoyed about the movie, except this time I'm in the driver's seat and I get to kind of control the story and how it unfolds, at least to a certain extent. There is a point to be made about the roster of this video game because I think a lot of people could possibly make the case that this is the weakest roster 
out of all three LEGO Marvel games, especially if you're a comic book fan, it definitely seems to be a bit lacking in that department because this was also released again at the peak when Sony and Fox were treated as kind of hostiles when it comes to Disney and Marvel, and they tried to shun and eliminate all the characters that those guys owned and not really show them or represent them in any capacity. With the exception of, of course, once the Spider-Man deal came together, this game did actually get a bunch of Spider-Man DLC, which was absolutely awesome to see. It was just an absolute blast to play through. The other thing that gives this game a lot of momentum is the fact that it had the Manhattan hub world that we saw from Lego Marvel superheroes. It essentially took that hub world and built up on it with a bunch of other really cool iconic locations that you could visit, whether it be the Barton Farm, Tony Stark's Malibu House, and many others. Now, I don't want to also make this game sound perfect because obviously it had its flaws. The fact that they reused lines from the actual films instead of getting new voice recordings did seem cheap at times, and it did have its fair share of bugs and problems. So I'm not out here pretending like this is a flawless video game. I just really, really enjoyed my time of playing Lego Marvel's Avengers. And for that, I place it in second place. And in number one, it is the best of the best, the creme de la creme, the absolute best experience that you could have as a Lego and a Marvel fan. It is Lego Marvel Superheroes. This game is exceptional. I feel like this game is going to age like fine wine. It is absolutely incredible how well this game holds up. It is the game that offered us the best story. You have this really, really great sequences where you have a great variety of all that Marvel has to offer in terms of heroes and then pitting them against a great combination of different villains, then tying it all together with the epic finale where you get to fight Galactus on the Helicarrier. I mean, you could not have asked for a better story to experience in this format, something that felt almost like a, one of those Marvel Ultimate Alliance games. It felt grandiose. It felt like the story kept getting bigger and bigger. It felt like you got to visit all the different touch points of the Marvel Universe, whether it be the X-Men, the Fantastic Four, the Spider-Man characters. It really did such a great job of allowing you to be a true fan of the complete Marvel Universe. As if the story wasn't good enough, the roster was absolutely stacked. This was the Marvel game that featured the most variety of characters. We have not since gotten a Lego Marvel game that featured the Fantastic Four, the X-Men, the Avengers, the Spider-Man characters. This game had it all. Big figs, mini figs, and of course, all of that then came together on the hub world, which was absolutely filled with activities for you to complete. Whether it be completing missions, finding new characters, interacting with other characters, finding Easter eggs, and just epic, epic locations that you got to visit from the helicarrier to the Baxter building to the X mansion. I mean, this map had it all. Just an absolutely epic, epic experience. Honestly, in my opinion, this might very well be the best Marvel video game that you can play. I know that there's a lot of other great Marvel games out there. Of course, Marvel Spider-Man comes to mind, but that focuses on just Spider-Man himself, and it doesn't really feature the whole Marvel universe. This goes on ahead and lets you into all the different nooks and crannies of the Marvel Universe and gives a lot of these characters the credit and the due that they deserve. And there you have it, guys. That is my list. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Where would you guys rank the LEGO Marvel games from worst to best? Again, this is not to say that you think that the one that is quote unquote worst is actually a terrible game. It's just on a comparative basis, it is worst relative to the other two. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please don't forget to smash that thumbs up button. I would really appreciate that. Thank you so very much for helping out with the algorithm. And of course, I will hopefully catch you all here on the next one. Peace out. See you later, alligators.